say hello to this Avro Vulcan. As you can see, compared to me, it's a large aircraft. Did you know there was only 11 years between the first flight of the Lancaster and the first flight of the Vulcan? Despite its radical and futuristic appearance, the Avro Vulcan was built using traditional methods with most of its structure made from standard light alloys. Did you know Woodford Airfield was where it's built? Early Vulcans had a striking look. Prototypes were finished in gloss white, while the first B1s left the factory in bare metal, their nose split between black and silver. When under the aircraft, you can see how big the control surfaces were. It was a bomber that could fly like a fighter and was capable of barrel rolling. The Vulcan's only combat missions came late in its service life, during the 1982 Falklands War. In a daring long-range operation known as the Black Buck Raids, Vulcans flew just under 4,000 miles from some island I can't pronounce to strike Argentinian forces in the Falklands. Each mission required complex air-to-air -air refueling from Victor tankers, burning an incredible 1.1 million gallons of fuel per raid. While it was designed to drop nuclear bombs, only the Valiant ever dropped one during testing. That aircraft is at RAF Cosford and you can find it on our page. This one is fitted with a fueling probe at the nose. Does it mean this one was involved in a Black Buck raid? If anybody knows, let us know. The bomb bay was huge, 11 meters long and 3 meters wide. To put that in perspective, it's 0.06 miles long. On May 1st, Vulcan X M607 dropped bombs on Port Stanley's airfield, scoring a direct hit on the runway, crippling its use for enemy fighter jets. The strike was soon followed by Royal Navy Sea Harriers, targeting enemy air defences, marking the Vulcan's final moment in combat history. Now it's safe to say the beloved Avro can be seen in museums like this one RAF in Hendon. What do you think should the Avro still be in use today?